family of God is Pastor Jatina Hurd in Meditating Life Center in Louisville, Kentucky, with our Bible study lesson tonight with Brother Duran, our teacher in training. Yay! If you think he's doing a good job, you all should let him know. Put it in the comments or go to his page, Duran Hampton, and let him know. We got a lot of views on there, some comments to me. So you all seem to be appreciating that we've expanded out into a Bible study. But if you missed any of the lessons, you can go to our Facebook pages, which are Pastor Jatina Meditating Life Center. It says Pastor Jatina, Beatrice McClendon Meditating Life Center on Facebook, or Jatina Hampton Heard, or Minister Jatina, or our Foundational Bible Study Group. And again, usually I share these to Brother Duran's page, so he's kind of new here recently so if you want to talk to him he would appreciate it go ahead and friend him on facebook yeah. and get to know him a little bit uh, better um, tonight's lesson is going to be part two we've been talking about the book of james don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel which is minister to tina because then you can put the lessons on autoplay and you can listen to all of them or share them with other people in your car because what if they, they may not listen to me or you but they may listen to the lessons if you're playing them in your home or on your device, all right? And uh, also you will know when we have something new that comes up that I put on there, you'll get to know all of us a little better. So we appreciate every last one of you, your comments, your likes. Please like, share, and follow, right, on Facebook so that we can all get these lessons all together, grow in grace, and be able to build upon what we've learned and share it. Um, as you get your Bibles ready or your devices ready and turn to the book of James. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you because you are good. You are holy. You are worthy. You are excellent in all the earth. We thank you, God, for being God. We thank you for your majesty, your, your beautiful world that you've created, even though mankind has done Many, many things that have been destructive. We still can see the great beauty in your creation, God. So we know that there's none like you. And we thank you and appreciate you and, and bow down before you while we bring forth this lesson that you have given Brother Duran to bring to us, Lord. Help us to get the principles and be able to apply them to our lives in, in hope and in obedience and in joy, Lord, that there's a blessing in knowing your word because it brings us closer in relationship to you. Now, Lord, we just lift up anyone who is in need, any area in our lives, God, where we're in need, in our spirit, Lord, if our faith is lagging somewhat, some things have come at us, Lord, some things we are still to overcome, some things that we're still working on, that we're still vulnerable to, Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus for your strength and your power, your love and your joy to permeate our souls, our minds and our hearts, Lord, help us seek your word. Lord, and learn to rightly divide it and meditate on your word because your word is truth, God. Help us to live it so that it becomes truth to us, God. Help us to share it so that we can be united in that truth. God, we ask that you touch physical bodies that are in pain right now. Lord, we just pray that people would just lay their own hands on themselves, Lord, like you had me do when I had COVID or when I've been sick or when something on my body hurts. I just... Touch, I just lay my hands on myself and I just pray and believe that things are going to get better, that I'm going to be healed, Lord. And even if, while I go, if I go through a process of healing, in the meantime, I can just feel your power being released. So right now we pray that people lay their hands on their part of their body that they hurt, or put a heating pad or something that gives them some warmth and some comfort, Lord, as long as it doesn't do any harm. Harm. Let, it, let them use wisdom as to what they might do, but to but pray and believe you that you are a healer, that you give us comfort in our times of sorrow, in our times of suffering, that you are with us. Right now, I could just see people just rolling over, going to sleep. They thought it would be another night that they were not going to be able to sleep, but right now they feel the warmth of your love and the warmth of your touch on their bodies in their minds, in their hearts, they feel the desire that you have for them to be at peace and to have rest and to keep their joy. And so they are, they are comforted by your Holy Spirit, filling their room and, <clears throat> excuse me, and elevating their thoughts to thoughts of worthiness and peacefulness. 
because of the sacrifice of Jesus that they are yours. They are your children. They're like a father. You are comforting them right now. So they're sleeping peacefully tonight. And they will wake up refreshed in the morning. They have forgotten about their pain, even if it's still there because they are at peace in their minds and their hearts. And we thank you, God, for giving that peace of God to people right now under the sound of my voice by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We just pray for the healing that they get the medical help that you have provided, that they get the mental health help that you have provided, the emotional help that you are providing in your word by your spirit, by people you have trained up to come alongside to help people find their way to peace of mind, peace of heart, to make sound decisions, to avail ourselves of what you've already given us. Not a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound man. We won't be fooled by the enemy. We won't be tricked by our own weaknesses. We won't be deceived by our own sorrows or our past. But we're going to walk in power with you, God. So we thank you, Lord, for our good mental health. That even if it's a process or it's in progress, that every day we're growing stronger in you. And Lord, we just pray for anyone that financial issues right now god we pray for wisdom and we pray for stability in our spending and wisdom in our spending or to be good stewards over what you've already given us lord please uh, give us the wisdom to know what our wise decisions and the confidence to know that you are a provider so even if we, there's something that we must have or we feel like we must do and it costs us well we know that you have always made a way and you always will make a way you have made promises that we will not go without food. We will not go without shelter. We will not go without clothing. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. And you will make us to lie down in green pastures. You lead with us beside the still waters. You restore the restorer of our souls to put us back in wholeness with you. So, God, we have peace of mind and heart tonight. I hear you saying, pray for peace and of mind and heart tonight. That it permeates the atmosphere, Lord. And so we know that we're going to be okay. You give us the wisdom and the power to create wealth. And when a blessing comes from you and it adds no sorrow. So we know that you're going to make sure that we have just what we need and a lot of things that we want because they will line up with your will. So we thank you for what you've already done and what you've already given. And we know that we're going to walk into your will. And so we're going to be okay. And we're going to have more than enough because we're going to be able to bless others with what you bless us with, Lord, because we are your children and we are heirs. So we thank you in advance, Lord, for the manifestation of prosperity that comes from you with no sorrow, but with wisdom in our spending and good stewards of being able to bless others and build up your kingdom. God, for any other need that anyone has tonight, Lord, we just pray for them, Lord for people who are coming out of disaster situations, fires and floods and things that have just happened in our lives, Lord, even in our emotions and our relationships. God, we just pray that you heal your restorer so we know that you will restore what has been taken away from us for whatever reason. We know that you already have a plan for us and whatever is ours, we will have it, Lord. So we speak that over the lives of those who are in the rebuilding stages in any area of their lives. God, we speak to those who've lived a long life and they're getting tired to know what blessings they are to us, like Elder Lupus and Miss Theola and all these other people that we know that are older people that are, the hope that we believe are still here and going into the older years, including ourselves, God. Just be with us, Lord, as we age and go through the things the aging bodies and minds go through because we know that you can keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you. As this lesson goes forward, Lord, let it be a blessing to everyone who hears it. Let it be just what they needed right at the time, of, right for such a time as this. And you will get, bless the teacher, Lord, and empower him, strengthen him, fill him with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And you will get the glory, honor, and praise as you bless families. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Like I said, this is from the uh, Modern Life Study Bible. So I'm going to kind of use this Modern Life Study Bible kind of like we did with the uh, standard lesson. You know, just use it because it's got so many teaching materials in here. Like if you 
look like every single book has these sections like this and like in this part two I used a section similar to this in James the section right there mm -hmm. is where that comes from what I wrote about the commentary mm -hmm. so I, even in the future uh, my next Bible study I'm kind of going to be using some of their stuff to mix in with mine if it's really important so it's called what the, the study the uh, modern life study Bible okay it just always has all these footnotes on each little verse. Every now and then I put one in the Bible study. Let's see, what else? Okay, so we did the overview. We went through 10 of the top thing, main points in the book of James. <coughs> I said some commentary on what I believe the book of James mostly covers. And so, like I said, this section is taken directly from the Modern Life Study Bible, where it's been adapted to this Bible study. They said, uh, James chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, why the rush? said, the MLS Bible states, God is more concerned with us being someone rather than us getting somewhere. Instead of measuring our worth by what we achieve and acquire, the Lord wants us to develop virtues such as peace, truth, and integrity. He intends for us to, number one, endure trials. Number two, trust him to meet our needs, freely asking for his help. Number three, discern between good and bad to make wise decisions. Number four, give generously to others as he gives us generally, generously, as he gives generously to us. Listen, uh, number five, listen well and respond thoughtfully. And number six, act instead of merely talking about doing good. So are you going to break each one of those down? Uh, number seven also is show compassion for the needy and forgotten. But, uh, well, we could kind of in a way, uh, just says that, like, he, he knows that we're going to go through a lot of rough stuff. You know, some people just have a dream, think they're going to, you know, just walk through life without any problems, but God expects us to endure trials so that we can gain wisdom and, uh, you know, uh, dexterity to stand up to the devil and his, you know, resist the devil. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, I like that. I like the paragraph, the very beginning paragraph where it says he's more concerned with us being someone than getting someone in. Says he doesn't met he doesn't especially in this time you know got a lot of politic, political stuff going on and things like that and it's like it said he doesn't in your what you showed us it says he it does he doesn't measure our worth by what we achieve or acquire I mean that's technically true I mean I mean it's, you mean material gain I mean he does we're gonna be judged for everything we did and said in the body you know that he required of us but. Uh, it says he wants to develop the virtues inside of us, I guess, like the fruit of the spirit. But they use peace, truth, and integrity. And you said so. It's one of the ways he um, develops those virtues in us is number one that you learn how to endure trials. Right. And I heard you say like, well, gain wisdom. He so thinks. What to endure trials? Mm -hmm. To gain wisdom. Yeah. Plus, in this toughen up. Lots of dexterity. Toughen you up to. Yeah. Stand more firm. What else do y'all think? What do you think about time will help you learn how to endure trials? Well, you got to be able to face a, a adversity or a trial with the single mindedness that you're going to get through it with the help of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do it all on your own. Confidence. Confidence. Yeah. And then, uh, like you remember what he did, like when the Holy Spirit brings things to our remembrance, so it helps us we remember what he's done before. Yeah, he brought our ancestors across the Red Sea. <laughs> that, was, that was other lessons, you know. Uh -huh. Go back and look at the other lessons if you missed any of the Bible studies or Christian education. But yeah, but it's like, uh, I think a lot of times people do forget because it's like when you get in the middle of something right now, particularly if it's something different. Yeah. You know, you've been kind of popping your collar or patting yourself on the back. And he's like, I, you know, I, I did this right here and I did all this and, and this happened and I still didn't fall apart and I still didn't cry or whatever. We kind of look at it like that if we look at it at all. But 
kind of, I'm hoping in this season we turn it around and say, like, no, I got through it. Yep. You know, sometimes I, you know, came through not even smelling like smoke. You know, then you can't even tell I've been through something because the answer came such a, in such a powerful way. You know, something I thought I wouldn't make it through. You know, like some people have had cancer or diseases or went to prison or, or you know, got um, harmed, shot or, you know, stabbed or something, assaulted. Some people have been molested or all these things like that and those things cause changes in your brain you know we like to here we talk about the kind of creature that we are the bible talks about human why would it talk about being a human if it wasn't acknowledging what kind of creation we are how does a human body and mind work okay how does a human body and mind react to things and what parts of those ways of us reacting is God working on well, those trials like y'all are saying they'll make you stronger yeah. Once you make it through them, as you as we go through them, they turn us towards God, like you were saying. And so we, hopefully, that means the next time something comes along, you, that's not that doesn't mean it's not like you said, brother Rand. It doesn't mean it's not gonna hurt. It's not you're not gonna be sad or even mad or have emotions about it. But if we can remember what God has done before, if we can remember what He promises, if we can remember, uh, to, if we can just trust Him, and then. The church come alongside. That's what we've been talking about in Job, kind of. You know, I say it all the time. You know, rise up church. But in Job, his friends packed up everything they had. Like, you know, a lot of people always preach about what they said, which was kind of out of order. We're gonna, so make sure you look at Sunday service this week. God willing, we're going to talk about what they said. But they packed, when they heard their friend was in trouble, they packed up everything that yeah. they had and went to their friend. And when they got there and they saw what their friend looked like with those boils and sores and, you know, sorrow and just, oh, they just tore the clothes and did, you know, ashes. yeah, put through ashes and, and did everything that they were going through with him. And so imagine, you know, after the fact, the wisdom they gained by doing that, going and experiencing that with Job and, you know, they realized how bad life can get and, you know, how how good it is to not have all those things go wrong for you, you know, not to take anything for granted. And they also, <clears throat> you know, learned a lot uh, philosophically because they were, in my opinion, they were talking kind of philosophically, you know, as what they believed, you know, what was I important do, about, I do the yeah, about the world and about the heavens and about situations. So they went in a real philosophical argument back and forth. I you read all of it. I've, I've read it quite a few times. Oh, okay. I'm, 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 I'm coming from a different direction, as you know this, but go ahead. I was just saying that, uh, they, I was just, because we were saying endure trials, you know, yeah. by them going through that and Joe going through that, that was a life experience that not only should have both boosted their faith, everybody's faith, showing that he went that low, but then came back up that high. So it's like, yeah, if you keep believing in God, it's going to work out in your favor, probably even better than you thought. But also the fact, like I said, those specific philosophical arguments they had, it was one of those things like an intelligent person would hear and be like, hmm, and really reflect on some of those things. Like before they could even respond to answer because it was just so deep what they were thinking and talking. But yeah, yeah, it was, you know, yeah. So that's that's wisdom gained by doing trials. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're so we fleshing. We might could just talk about that and then and then come back next week because it's so much you know that goes in and doing trials because we even spoke about how. Some people say you're bringing me down, you know, mm -hmm. when you're when you're going through it, and they go like, "Oh, you just get over it," or I wish that, you know, gosh, I'm just so tired of you crying. And I remember one time somebody told me, "I'm just when you like almost like you know, who was it? Uh, God said to Samuel about Saul, when are you gonna stop grieving <laughs> Saul?' You know, people said that to me one time, and I, you know, because I was grieving something, it was a big loss for me, and I just was. You know, you try not to talk about it because people will be like, oh, my God, here, here, we, go here we go again. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I usually am not like they, even if you talk to me, even though I, I might be thinking that sometimes because I'm human, I try my best to listen. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else or whatever, but I've been through it. I told you almost everything I'm teaching you all, I've been through it. And other than that, I'm studying it, you know, but it's I understand what it's like when, when you just you got to work your way through it. And, you know, it helps us, I feel like it helps us endure it, but we don't help you wallow in it. So it is good when people say, like, okay, when are you going to, you know, let's move on to something else. I can try to distract you. Well, what happened, though, 
Y'all. Yeah, but once I dig it, I'm just way I do. I kind of, I ain't gonna even lie. I kind of ruminate over stuff. I go over it every ten ways to Sunday to see, could, is it something I could have done? Is it some way I can get through it faster so it can just stop hurting? You know, of course I pray and stuff. Then I get tired of it. I just get tired of it. I, I even I'm like here, I'm not talking about this anymore. Forget that. Then they, they come with their problems, and that's what throws you because it makes it seem as though they're stronger than you. Because when you're going through it, some people will be like, oh, you know, you're too sensitive or the person wasn't any good or that thing wasn't good for you, so, you know, but it was important to you, right? And then you go like, yeah, maybe they're right. <laughs> you're right. You know, all this true, but it just still hurt, right? Some things, you know, you lost or some time you lost or some things, your consequences like we talked about last week. And then next thing I know, people crying, come and crying to me about the same kind of circumstances. I'm going like, well, wait a minute. We ain't gonna get up now. <laughs> you gonna get over it, you know? So it kind of goes back to the joke thing that you kind of can't be too hard on people the way they do try to comfort you or, or something like that. Because, you know, next thing you know, things are going around. But I, my point was that he, God expects us to endure trials. And there's so many, we're trying to just give you some tools to you know, say like this is what can help us endure those trials is when your friends come alongside, we come alongside each other and kind of walk with each other, even if we don't say anything, can be supportive of each other if we can, you know, <coughs> remind us of the word and things. You know, the Bible says that God comforts us so that we can have, give that same comfort to other people um, in their time of need. That, that's our healing ministry scripture that. Dr. Lucas and I had was, you know, to provide that same comfort to other people to help them when they're going through trials and suffering, pray for them, like Brother Durant's talking about in our intercessory prayer and things like that. So he doesn't just leave us, you know, out in the wind usually, you know, he, he's going to do things that's going to give us a way of escape or to help us to endure our trials, but we still have to go through them. The second thing was what? Trust him to meet our needs, freely asking for his help. That reference is, uh, James chapter five through uh, verse uh, chapter one verses five through nine, where he's talking about uh, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. But he, he continues it on, you know, talking about uh, let's see word for word what it says. It says if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he doubts. He who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Well, but he was just saying, mostly through it, though, he was just like, you know, gives liberally without reproach, um, asking it will be given to him. If you have faith and you ask, you know, without doubting. And so that's why it ties into number two, trust him to meet our needs, freely asking for his help. And I like that too, because it's like, you know, how will you become that person that he wants you to become instead of just be measuring your worth in the things that you have or the goals you've achieved out here in the world? And it's like, okay, you're learning how to go through what you have to go through to mature like that. And then you trust him that he's going to meet, meet your needs. And if you don't know what to do to ask him. He's not going to think he's like think you're stupid or say or get mad or anything like that. He, I know I believe that God prefers that we come to him no matter, if, you know, even if he does have a little bit of doubt and you go, like, I tried everything and it didn't even work. But I know now that even if you do, you know, like the Bible says, I know that, but if you just only do it or you only ask you, then it's going to be taken care of. So that still takes you back to faith, you know, admitting that, you, that we're weak, you know, like the God said, you know, I believe, I believe, well, then help my unbelief, you know, so he knows that we still have a ways to get there, and that's who we end up going to, and that's what he's looking for, is us to go to him, and once again, though, he does work through the hands and feet of his people, okay, and so the, that's the way he meets our needs, we are God's ambassadors, and we do things that he would do them if he was still here, so he has made provision for us, and he can do it in the miraculous, and he can do it through us by blessing us. But he also expects his people to come alongside, okay, to help one another in time of need in the ways that we're led by the Spirit. Our basic human decency tells us, you know, that somebody might need our help. And people have been doing a good job of that, at least from what we've been seeing, you know, providing food and loading yeah. up and going to disaster areas or even having soup kitchens and 
you know, places where you can go get clothes and stuff. It's just for us to be grateful. That's what I feel like. Like sometimes you're like, he didn't meet my needs. I had to go to Salvation Army. I'm like, but that's meeting your need. You know how many people actually do go to the Salvation Army to buy clothes on purpose? I, I, I mean, y'all can talk about me. Somebody talked about me for buying clothes on sale, even, even though that's silly to pay $200. And then I paid 50, 50 the, the $50 shirt is still the $200 shirt. But I digress. I'm just saying that when I used to have to dress for all these praise teams and choirs I've been in, and they be picking these colors that I would not even wear at my funeral, I'm like, Man, I'm going to the Goodwill or somewhere like that. I'm not going to keep buying all these brand new things. So don't, you know, look down on clothes, you know, where they came from. But be, understand that it's a blessing to have clothing on your body. But that means God still provided. You, they gave you a bologna sandwich. He still provided. You know, if, if you get on some uh, plain, we used to got on buddies. I don't know, little plain tennis shoes. He still provided. So you still give him glory in the, what you might see as the small things. And then he can bless us in the greater things. So he's still going to provide for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's like some, it's something beats a blanket. It's like, now it might not be the best shoes, but it's some shoes. It might not be the best wife, but it's a wife. No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> he said a wife. I don't yeah, know. a wife. So, yeah. Might not be the best wife, but it's a wife. It's not a beast, you, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a yeah. you sleeve. You but know? that was my fault. I'm the uh, the copying of this. If, if you can see down here, y'all, this little square right here, that was supposed to be on y'all. That's where I got that from. On number two, uh -huh. one, five through nine. All that was supposed to be all your references for these. Y'all, 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 accidentally cut off on y'all vids. I see right there. Turn it where the people can see it towards the camera. If they can look at it, they can see this. Somebody can zoom in if they can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On, on y'all's version, it looks more like that. Or cut off at the yeah. bottom. Okay. Cut off. That paper you might want to feed it through the No, this tire. paper was long. Look how long the paper is compared to the regular paper, printer paper. Okay, That's so what happened. In our becoming who he wants us to be and developing these virtues, peace, trust, truth, and integrity. So we talked about enduring trials to, mm -hmm. to get there. Number two was to trust him to meet our needs. Then number three was what? To discern between good and bad. So you had to get discernment. To make wise decisions. That's chapter 1, 12 through 16. That's, uh, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised <coughs> to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has been conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings birth to death. Yeah. Do not be deceived, my brethren. Okay, no, that's 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 it. Do not be deceived, my brother. So that was that's the end of that part. Discern between good and bad to make wise decisions. So he ends it saying, "Do not be deceived, my beloved brother." Yeah, that's important because if nothing else, like sometimes you know, we as we learn, that's how we learn. You know, is that we've done the wrong thing or went the wrong direction or believe the wrong people who took advantage. You know, yeah. the enemy. Or someone who's influenced by the enemy, someone else who's still, you know, not quite safe in a certain area or whatever. And at some point, you have to, we have to, we need to learn from those things to, so we can make better decisions. Because at the worst, it can cost, uh, our, cost us our lives. Because many people who have mm -hmm. died from foolish decisions, they put them in, you know, places and in situations that cost them, cost them their very lives. Mm -hmm. But it can also just deter you from your destiny or whatever you really would be doing instead when you get caught up in the wrong thing. And that seems like that's what, to me, what the devil is doing right now is making people waste time. Kind of holding them captive and holding them still. How many people agree with me on that? Hamster wheel. Yeah, it's like standing paycheck back. Paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, Never getting ahead. Glass ceilings. Well, spending up all their money and don't have nothing to show for it. Being in bad relationships and staying in there. In that relationship without you know any changes being made or anything 
Or when you know when you're able to walk away from that relationship, you're not even married or anything. You can just get up and and I mean I I know emo- I was just talking about emotional bondage and stuff and um, things like that and codependency and all those. But knowing that we you need to get out of a bad situation, even something like changing a job. You know, some people you know you're afraid to to go from one job. See here we go with that fear again. But God yeah. did not give us a spirit of fear. So that's one another big thing we have to get past is fear ungodly fear so we can make those good decisions because sometimes you can discern between bad and good but you're afraid to take an action and you go like I know what's right and wrong but then I'll be by myself or mm-hmm. then I'll be lonely Peer pressure or yeah. threats or you know what's, what else I can't, climate. I can't see the future you know and so I'm scared to to make that move or make that change or anything, give that up, you know, these crutches and strongholds and stuff like that. So we pray and we trust God and we, you know, and as you make those choices, I promise you that after a while they become easier to make. And you can make choices even though they make you sad or even make you cry or hurt your feelings or even break your heart as you mature. And I, I'm not saying I arrived at all. I mean, Sometimes, I, like I said, I tend to ruminate over things. I'm getting, I'm a lot better, but I, I still have to go over them a lot to get my confidence up. You know, like I just went back to work, you know, um, and I just, it took me for a while. I mean, this school's been in about 40, 50 days or something, and I did not work with my mom. I was going through her cancer journey and the funeral and all that. And something just had a hold of me, y'all. It was like, I just, yeah. I know I just had this anxiety about, oh my goodness, you know, and, and then so... I finally just said, I'm just going to go on and do it. Some people say, do it afraid. Now, I wasn't afraid when I did it, but I still had some apprehension. Brother Tom gave me the word for it, and he was <laughs> giving me big words. But he gave me that word for it. I said, what is that cause? Said, I'm not afraid or anxious. He said, you're apprehensive. And I'm like, yeah, for some reason, after I missed that one school year, it was just the thought of walking into some changes that have been made, and I was just worried, but it turned out fine. My students were so glad to see me after I had missed that year and stuff like that. So, so don't let unreasonable fear hold you back, you know, when you know the choice that you need to make this for your good. Now, and use the the godly fear, you know, the fear of God, the you know, the fear that comes to you that says, oh, no, don't do this as a deterrent, you know. The caution, the Holy Spirit is saying, do not do this. The red flag, that kind of fearful feeling. Pay attention to it. Learn the difference between the two. You know, the something told me. That's what I always say. People say, something told me not to do that. And something told me I should do that. And you that's the discernment that you sh- we should be learning as we learn what God requires and what he says is right and wrong and what life shows us, right? Yeah. So, you know, always go like, I knew I should have ah. No, I should have done that. Yeah. How many times have you said that? Or, you know, something's telling me I really need to do it. I always say that usually that something's telling you is the Holy Spirit. You know, if it's in line with what God says. So you have to learn to discern that. That when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, truth, wisdom is speaking to you to make the right choice, even if it's going to hurt your feelings. Yeah, that, 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 that was, was it was Isaiah, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, something, 1133 or something like that. I can't remember. But it was like, you know, you should, you're, whether you look to the right or to the left, your um, ears should hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Mm-hmm. And at some point, that's the way it should be all the time. Even though turning on the water, honest to God, I mean, when you can really wash the dishes or not, so you, get that, you get that attuned to it. Or you go, at least I know that's how I feel. Not paranoia, not every little thing where you can't, you get frozen and immobile because you're not sure. But sometimes I'll, you know, I'll go like, I think I'm not going to do that. And it'll be a simple thing, but I'm like, if it's even a possibility that it's God, you know, then I, it's in my best interest not to do that thing. I'm not going to wash the dishes right now. I'm going to do something else, you know. I don't want y'all to get into mental illness, and not, you know, like I said, or paranoia but sometimes it's even the simplest of things and then you'll discover why you, something happened and you go like wow well, well, I'm getting more and more attuned to hearing from God because some, you know it's going to differentiate it's not going to be like every step you take every move you make every you know like that it's just going to be the weirdest of things or the simplest of things I guess you'd say and you go like I don't think I'm going to do that right now I think I'm going to just leave it alone and then you're going to start finding out God's training you to have that discernment for making good and 
better and best decisions and being able to walk away from bad decisions and bad choices even if it's something you want super bad or you were hoping for you learn that you know I, that something is telling me to just leave that alone okay i know i'm talking a lot but look yeah uh, number uh four is uh give generously to others as he gives generously to us and that comes from chapter 1, 17 and 18, which kind of continues from where we were at. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And I was talking about as he gives us generously. I don't, I don't know if giving somebody on the street corner a dollar is giving generously, but like you said earlier, it, it may not be a blanket, but it's a, it's a blanket. It's a blanket. Yeah. And then if Maybe that dollar will help. Fifteen people give them a dollar, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes, every, like every said, every little thing counts. Yeah, it is. And, and people, I don't know, I don't know if people are giving more or less or whatever, but again, in, you know, in ministry or in the simplest of things, like, you, it's, you know, it's not easy because some people don't want to give anybody anything. They're paranoid. And they're like, I'm just going to go drink it. And I remember a guy, he asked me for money. He said he was going to go get a beer. And I gave it to him because he was honest. I said, okay. He said, I'm going to put your groceries in your car. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. When you t if you tip me, I'm going to go right across the street and get a beer. And I told him, I said, well, you know about alcoholism. You know about drinking. You know that it's not good for you. And he said, yeah, I've been considering that. And I, and I do understand that, and I'm like, okay, but because you were honest with me, I'm going to give you the dollar. And so I gave it to him. So be led by the Holy Spirit because that's my hope that because he had an encounter with me that maybe it changed something about him that day. Even if he went and got that beer that day, that my voice is in his head and in his ear, you know, to say, like, I'm a pastor, I'm a leader, I'm so grateful to be kind to him while he's still maybe in, in, in his bondage and stuff that that's going to, uh, do something for him and so you get you know you, it is kind of a little bit easier to just hand somebody a dollar or two or something like that we've, but we've done so many things to uh be generous you know give yeah. to others not Dare just care. money as they say dare to care dare to care and then like events like where you talk to somebody who's sad or like you see a kid fall down and you hurry up and pick them up so they don't start crying just all them little things you know i was just saying that in my head i said uh, every positive moment blocks a negative moment from happening. So every second that is positive, mm -hmm. and the atmosphere is positive, and you're thinking positive, that makes sure that that 5, 10, 15 minute window was not negative. It was positive. And a lot of times, like I said, mm -hmm. it's, it starts from on the inside. And you're projecting positivity and thinking positive. And then these other things come together to keep that full atmosphere together. So that whole time that you can sustain that, it keeps negativity out. So this is according to how, how far you can take. Can you just do it in your house? Can you do it in the car? Can you get to work and keep the same aura and atmosphere? Because you keep all the toxic people right. away and you you know stay in your zone. Yeah. All you're putting out is positivity. You're not thinking nothing negative. And then, you know, this uh, it's just a way of thinking that just promotes positivity because you see something, like mom said, you're gonna act because you're in that mode, it's like, oh, what the heck is that dog doing biting that little kid? You're gonna run over yeah, there. Yeah, Yeah, you're gonna run over there and try to stop it. Like, but if you was in a negative mood, or if you was a more of a stereotypical evil person, you'll just start laughing. Like, look at that dog eating that little kid. <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. even care. You just walk away. You kick a little can, and then start smoking a cigarette, and just start laughing, walking away, ready to commit more crimes and do more drugs and alcohol. Because that's just the your morals is so what they call piss poor, it, that you don't really care. So No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you got to, being generous, well, was, my main point was being generous is more than just money. Too. All right, you're sure. saying, oh, yeah. you're, you're using a spiritual definition, which is probably more what God is talking about because he uses money for an example because that's what's so important to us, giving our money to people, you know, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. But you're right, it's like, Spiritual giving of your love and of your time and of your mm -hmm. concern. Holding the door for old older people with four way walkers and wheelchairs, 
close the door for them and you know man, like, ladies drop their purse and they don't realize it You're like oh man we dropped your purse before one of the more or less more corruptible Buster. people take it Nice. Like, oh man, you dropped your purse. Everybody's looking at you all mad because you said so. Dang. Yeah, but I don't like, everybody. Well, not everybody, but the criminal element. Yeah. Uh, the or, or, or like you were saying, a bit of a while back, it it re it can reset somebody's negative thinking or negative experiences when somebody else is generous in their love and kindness. The fruit of the spirit that we started off talking. About. About that God wants us it to spreads. gain. It spreads from in you. Yeah. Now that person is happy because instead of them losing their purse that day, I was there and was able to warn them that they were about to lose their purse or get it stolen. And so now they're actually happy because they're like, oh, I was glad. I'm glad Duran was there because he's an honest guy. He's probably the only honest guy there. And he just happened to be there when that happened. So I got, you know, so now she's happy. You know, she's positive. And so my positivity affected the outside world. Now she might do stuff to Help somebody else. A lady might drop a whole bag of canned goods in the parking lot. And then so she'll go over and help an old lady pick up canned goods. Normally she'd be ripping and running and didn't have time to do nothing. Yeah. But since I did that for her, it put it on her conscience to do something nice for somebody else. And it just kept spreading. All right. And that's the fruit of the spirit. It's like planting seeds and things. It's like you got kindness and goodness and things like that that you uh, show other people. And they can give a word to that and say, like, wow, that person was very kind. Or they were very good. They did a very good thing. Those are fruit of the spirit. What were you going to say? Oh, like the uh, time we were at Walmart and that guy was witnessing all the way around the store mm -hmm. following us. Mm -hmm. And you told him, man, you have to obey the laws of the land. Right. And he cleared up. Be yeah. quiet and was let out. But so that's, you, a, that's another so thing. You're saying you, giving attention and giving time right. to somebody. That's another thing you would say. You said lead by example. And so, like, by me doing that, like, you'll see, like, it was a little kid who was, like, 15 or something. Maybe he was in his head. He was thinking about joining the gang that day. But he seen me mm -hmm. get that purse and give it to that lady, and it changed his heart. Like, so that, that leading by example, you, it might be third party, third person. Somebody might witness you doing something for somebody else, and they might even catch the bug. And you um, might not ever know it. Yeah, you might not ever know Somebody see you doing something good for somebody else yeah. and then proliferate positivity. Yeah, because one of the lessons one of you all was teaching, it's straight up said that it was talking about how other people were watching. We started talking about how people are watching what we do as the church, so we yeah. need to be careful uh, and mindful of how we're living our lives. You're watching me all the time with PMT. Oh, I think he's upset. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it goes. It still goes back to the the original part of your lesson, where why God wants you to become a certain kind of person and develop those virtues. And those virtues are usually going, even though they call them peace, truth, and integrity. It says such as because mm -hmm. there's, there's they, more. There's fruit of there's the a spirit lot of virtues, and a lot everything of that you're naming. Those are all fruit of the spirit. Like again, there's there's kindness and goodness and. Peace and patience, you know, you have to pay. All those are fruit of the spirit. Go to your Galatians, and those are fruit of the spirit that you're that we're talking about that go along with this. And those are virtues that we're developing as we do these things, as we, we learn how to properly endure a trial without sinning or trying to, you know, hurt other people or turning against God. And as we learn how to trust Him to meet our needs and we're faithful, right? That's a fruit of the spirit, and mm -hmm. learning how to discern what's good and, and bad. and and to make good decisions, that's self-control. That's a fruit of the Spirit. And then uh, to give generously to others as he gives generous, generously to us. And we're talking about doing all these great deeds. And that's patience and kindness and goodness. And those are fruit of the Spirit. And so, uh, and then the last one, I think, or la next to the last one is... Uh, this one, well. Yeah, I was going to say... It's actually two more. I said the next five, to the last one. Right? Five, six, and seven. We did generously, then there's yeah. all kind of see the needy and forgotten. Okay, so, okay. so listen to, well. Listen well and respond thoughtfully. Number five, uh, 119 through 121. Okay. You still uh, in James 1? Mm hmm. Uh, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, so to speak, so to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. This is listen well and respond thoughtfully. Number mm -hmm. through 21. The righteous does not produce the righteousness of God. I got amplified, so I got a whole bunch of words. 21 counts too. 
says, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. And so they're just saying the implanted word, listen well and respond thoughtfully, the implanted word. Yeah, and, I, and listen, it's because our soul is vital. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you got to listen to what the, so. yeah, listen to what the Lord is saying. And that shows you how bad or good our skills are anyway. Because when we read the word, we should be hearing the voice of God. And when we're obeying the word, we, and when we're living our lives, we should be able to, and then to hear, you know, like, no, I, I know this is what I learned. This is what I was taught. This is what's right. This is what's wrong. <laughs> Excuse me, feeding into these other, this list of other virtues, which we've already, we've shown correspond to the fruit of the spirit and then uh listening well well means like being able to hear not just listen because listen is a sound hit your eardrum <clears throat> but to you know to hear it means to take it in and to understand what was said you know or the sound that you heard like with the train <laughs> she called the train we were getting ready to leave today we took them to the port so they could run <clears throat> the boats were going up and down mm -hmm. the river and so they sometimes they bark at the boats i don't know if they think it's the train and we thought we weren't going to get to see a train and next thing you know we hear the rumbling you know you know it's a train it's the tracks are shaking and you go that's not a boat it's a train and we turn around because we know it's coming, we turn around anticipation and expectation, and we and we wait for Chico to start barking yeah. because the, we wait for the train whistle. Because yeah, right. we're you know we're listening and we're listening to hear that, that that is in fact a train, and that's the kind of attention that we need to have to listen well. You know, you want to hear to understand. Yeah. Okay, and then and the, here goes the train whistle. I can't do it. Yeah, whatever goes is loud. I could. Oh, I, I didn't turn my phone on. I put, have you ever done that? You put it on video, but you forget to hit play. Oh my gosh! But because I like to do it, and I play it back, and she go bark in the house because <laughs> it fixes the train. Okay, but I turned it on later, and he was you know running behind it because even the dog could understand the train was coming, and God wants us to you know have ears that hear him. You hear Jesus say, you know, those who have an ear to hear that, listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So we use those same tools with each other. We listen to understand, not listen to just reply, because I got it bad myself. I, I kind of pick up where you're going, and then I'll just go ahead. My whole family, man, we'll be going at it. You know, but some kind of way, we all we work it all out at the end of the day, piece by piece. We understand what the person is trying to say, and we all come to a conclusion. But, you know, and then respond thoughtfully because sometimes you get mad. Oh, my goodness. And there's no telling what coming. I am not going to even lie. There's no telling. I'll be telling people, just end it. That's what I, that's the best I could do. Let's end this right now because I'm going to say something terrible. The Lord's still working on me. You know, terrible I'm going to say something really bad. I, I already told you I'm not going to do it or I don't want to hear it or you're, Becoming insulting or disrespectful, and people want to keep on talking. I'm like, that's revelation that uses that specific wording you used right there. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear. I think it says it multiple times. But well, Jesus says he it too. He who has an ear, let him hear. And he, he says that. So it's, it's like, and then respond thoughtful. So you have to respond thoughtfully. You should know that about yourself. You know that you, we can't just turn around because people will shut it down. They won't. You know they won't. If it's important to you, you know. Then uh, try to respond thoughtfully. I told you, like, when the boy tried to kiss me, I told him I hate him, right? I told you I done on another thing. I ain't hate him. You know, I just didn't, I wanted to go away. I didn't have the words. So we got to learn our right words, too. I mean, when I was a kid, that was when I, not now, I'm not pushing babies away right now. Uh, as an adult, that was a kid. <laughs> but. Mr. Tina! I know. Tina! I hate you. I hate you. You know, it was when I, it was when I was a kid in the 